We continue in our teaching series and we're now in part three, serving God and the interest of his kingdom pays the unmatchable. Pays the unmatchable. There are treasures in the world, the Bible, with the capacity to set anyone above all nations of the earth. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. If you will hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all his commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. There are treasures in the world with capacity to set anyone above all nations of the earth when discovered and engaged with. When discovered and engaged with. I can still remember very clearly in the year 1984, our church was under 40 when God appeared to me from the scriptures. God appears to people from scriptures. First Samuel 3, 21. He said, the Lord appeared again unto Samuel at Shiloh. The Lord appeared unto Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. He still appears to people today. Many here are witnesses. How God appears to them through the word. The Lord said to me from that scripture, my son David, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. Lord, I'm interested. Say, then whatever I tell you to do, do it. You don't have to beg me. It's not going to be so okay prayer. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. You're on your way to the topmost top. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. We have enough treasures in the world that can take any ordinary person to the topmost top in the race of life. And you are the one God is talking to. Amen. What is breakthrough? Above all nations of the earth? Ah, that's something else. But the greatest commandment in all of scriptures is loving God with all of one's heart soul and strength. <laughs> Mark 12, verse 30 and 31. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than this. Love God, love your neighbor, and you are lost. What the commandment? What the commandment? So he said, love is the fulfilling of the law that launches us into the blessedness of Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 to 14. All of those blessings is fulfilled in one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. Love is the fulfilling of the law. You are in love, you are fulfilled all that the law demands.
when the love of God takes its sway and takes the central stage of a man's life, he's turned to a living wonder, a pace setter, a pathfinder, a trailblazer. For eyes have not seen, nor ears heard. First Corinthians 2 9. It doesn't pass through the mind or heart of any man what God has in stock for them that love him. That love him. <laughs> they are ahead of their generations. They are far beyond what age they live in. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has in stock for them that love Him. Because He that dwells in law dwells in God and God in Him. 1 John 4.16 And as we grow in love, we are filled with all the fullness of God. Who does new things every day? <laughs> so these individuals are newsmakers. Newsmakers. By new things happening in their life time and over. This is what makes still worship fruitful. <laughs> Do I part with all my goods to feed the poor? And I will offer my body to be burnt by way of sacrifice, and have no charity, it profits me nothing. The love of God as the motivation in our still worship is what makes it fruitful, fruitful. Supernaturally fruitful. Love driven stewardship. Love motivated stewardship. Love rooted stewardship. So it makes it fruitful. I'm not serving God for what He does or for who He is. I'm my affection for Him. That's why some are serving without results. Though I offer my body to be burned, if it's to make money, you are wasting time. But because I love him. The greatest question that gives life real meaning, do you love me? <laughs> That's the greatest question that gives life the utmost meaning. Lovest thou me? Joel, thou son of Mamadaga, do you love me? Big question. He asked it three times. Until you answer that question, sir, you have a long way to go. Do I really love him or I just love what he does? Do I really love him? Please answer that question within you. Do I really love Jesus? Lord, see that I don't leave this village where I met it. It's an expression of love. How can a village like this not have your name in this place? Can you What's your problem? No, love is my problem. Sir, so you can't be in love and be lost. You'll be found. <laughs> I have found David, my lover. He was in the forest, but I found him. You can't be truly in love and be lost. Come on now. <laughs> 
You can't be in love and be lost in the radar. No. For the eyes of the Lord run to, to and fro in all the earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards him. Second Chronicles 16.9. It's not the city where you live. It's where your heart is. <laughs> That village is not on the map up to now. Mm. I said up to now, that village is not on the map. Mm. I was 19 years then. That village is not on the map now. So it's not that you're in White House mm. or Green House. A heart for God is all it takes to give anyone's life the utmost meaning. Lover imagines more than a conqueror. <laughs> Nay, you know this thing we are more than conquerors. What's as a place of the love of God as in Christ Jesus? We are more than conquerors. Praise God. Romans chapter 8 and 35 to 39. <laughs> so, talking about breakthrough. Love is the mystery. The love of God is the mystery behind access to a world of unlimited breakthroughs. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It doesn't enter the heart of any man. What God has in store for them that love him. Love is a choice. Love is not a gift. Love is not a calling. Love is a choice. I love you more than anything. I love you more than anyone. I love you. Lord, I give my life to you. Sir, I love him more than I love myself. And he knows. The devil also knows, and he keeps showing it that it is true. I love him more than I love my wife. I have only one. I love him more than I love my children. It's the law. God first. Every other thing lies behind. You can't make God first and be last. Am I last in ministry? Stop that, my friend. Your skill is limited. Your strength is limited. There's no way your skill can take you to where God will take you. It is everlasting arm. When he picks you from any end, he throws you up. To his everlasting height. Please love him. Choose to love him. It's the wisest choice to make in all the world. Choose to love him. Choose to love him. I was before the Lord and I said, God, why is breakthrough so far fetched from so many people? They are following me for breakthrough, not for me. <laughs> Follow them that teach you the word of God. Watch the result they get. If you like the result, follow the steps. Hebrews 13, number 7. There is nothing I thought that does not work. Do I have faith so I can move on and I have no love? It profits me. Nothing. Faith won't deliver beyond your love. Faith works by love. Your faith will only deliver to the limit of your love for God. Galatians 5 6. Faith which worketh by love. Giving works by love. <laughs> Stewardship works by love. Everything that works in the kingdom works by love. 
Please choose to love him. Choose to love him. Stop counting experience. Do you love me? <laughs> You think Judas loved Jesus? He was communicating with you every day, every day. Proximity extraordinary. Can you say somebody that you love? <laughs> Lord believes all things. Judas didn't believe anything. Thomas didn't believe anything. And he was in that team. They live in the same dormitory. It's a choice to make. Every child of God has the fruit of the spirit of love inside him if he chooses to. to love. Your days of struggles are over. Yeah. And they are over forever. Yeah. They are over forever. Yeah. Now watch. Quite a number of people, things keep going well for them for a season, and suddenly, boom. You think God changed? No, they changed. And Solomon loved the Lord, and God just turned things that I have not seen, no, he has had, to happen in his life. And then he switched over, and Solomon loved many strange women. <laughs> and things went downward, and downward for, for life. Because he never recovered himself. <laughs> they turned his heart away from the law. And Solomon's abundance became lack. Peace became trouble. Please love him and believe God to sustain your love for him. Believe God to sustain your love for him. Is the key to everything you're looking for. Sir, you can't assess more revelation than you love him. It is your love and my love for him that determines how much he can confide in us of the secrets of the kingdom. I call you no more servant but friends. A servant doesn't know what his master does. I've called you friends because all that I've heard of my father I've made known unto you. So when you are in love, you gain access to all realms of revelation. So it's not enough to be in love. I was, I mean, I was on the campus. I was on fire for Jesus. Good history. Are you now on ice for Jesus? Ice cold. <laughs> Are you still on fire for Jesus? In fact, I was the leader in our fellowship. Wonderful history. After you have made your choice, it can now empower you to stay in love. So we call it the spirit of love. It thrives on your choice. Your choice first. The spirit of love, when you demand for it, and graces to sustain your love for God. I preached my first message. 1970. I started seeing people saved since that happened. By his grace, I'm still on my feet. Now, now, and that's open to every believer who cares to stay in love. So it's not enough to be in love, it's important to stay in love. For you to keep enjoying sweatless and stress-free other breakthroughs in life. It's your turn. Amen. It's your turn. Amen. It's your turn. Amen. Now, every true lover serves the interest of the one he loves. David, a man after my heart. Hmm. I have found David my servant. A heart for God. 
enables you or <laughs> empowers you to serve him. Serving the interest of the one you love is natural. It's natural. It's natural. You can serve him without loving him, but you can't love him without serving him. You can serve him what you want. Praise God. <laughs> but what you are looking for, what you are lost in after. I need this position in my company, the name of Jesus. I bind everybody. <laughs> you can serve him without loving him, but you can't love him without serving him. Abraham, my friend, and I remember my covenant with servant Abraham. You can't be his friend and not be his servant. I can as well stop here. This is the mystery behind my simple, mysterious life. I just love Jesus with all my being, <laughs> with everything inside of me, by choice and by supply of his grace. Choice first. Your choice first. Your choice first. There is nothing I am by grace or have by grace that I cannot demand for without a second thought and I've never lost out. I make a tentonia no I've come to you this morning as a prophet. I'm not a teacher this morning. I'm trying to show you the way to what you've been looking for. Have I ever prayed for a car? No. For a plane? For what? What will I do with it? I got to a place to introduce me and I won't go there again. The introduction was too much. I'm not the one he's talking about. Just love him. Leave him to take you wherever he wants. It's not being a dummy. It's the key to your dominion. Just love him. Make that choice today and then you have your breakthrough. We can close. Make that choice from the depth of your heart today, and then we're on. Can I have you say with me, one cannot love God and not serve him with delight. One may serve God without loving him, but one cannot love God without serving him. One may serve God for what he wants from God, but you can't love him without serving him. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. For everyone that chooses to love God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind, with all his strength, by this anointing today, the spirit of love will come upon your life yeah. and keep you panting after God all your days. Yeah. Another big hand for Jesus. Yeah. Platforms for kingdom advancement and still worship, as I've been examining it, includes kingdom advancement prayers. Now, we have outreaches <laughs> this last two Saturdays, we're having a Saturday. You are not out by whatever reasons in terms of your job schedule, your mobility. Anybody that can eat can pray.
If you love God, then pray that everyone out this week must sit on with harvest. Go before your army today and do what you have never done before. Grant every soul winner today utterance that will bring conviction, bring about conversion. God who sees your labor in secret will reward you openly. Engage the platform of fasting and prayer to secure salvation of souls in the kingdom. In Mark or Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, God who sees your prayer in secret will reward you openly. And this is how to pray. Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Matthew 6, 9 and 10. That will be done on earth. What is his will? He wants all men to be saved. Come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants them saved and brought to church for a covering against going back to the sea of sin. Verse 17 and 18 When you fast, praying the same prayer, thy kingdom come. God who sees your prayer and fasting secret will reward you openly. Number two platform. For kingdom advancement and divorce is targeting your friends through the testimonies of the Lord, both in your life and from the church. A friend is someone who confides in you. Somebody who's close to you, even ask cancer from you. What an opportunity. Mark 5:19. Go home and tell thy friends what great things God has done for you. So use the remaining days of this month to target your friends. Believe God for wisdom of approach. That won't put them off. And corner them in truth to the kingdom. My friend, if I don't tell you this, I will not be a friend indeed. Something changed in my life at some point. Jesus brought about that change. I just stepped into the realm of peace and joy. The kind I never knew possible before. And he knows you that every time he's around, you are charming. Not that you look, sometimes you say you have joy. <laughs> I used to be sickly. Jesus stepped in and changed my story. Amen. I used to live in fear. He cleared the fear of my life. Yes. Because light will never be afraid of darkness. It's darkness that fears light. I'd like you to please understand this. The world is wicked. The wickedness of darkness, but just the light of the world. Okay, if you see it's getting a bit uh, jittery, we talk about that later. We talk talk more about it later. Amen. Amen. You hit him the second time. A fisherman must be wise. <laughs> you can get anyone close to you to Jesus with ease. Let your love for God be your driving force. All these ephemeral things, they are temporal. They are temporal. <laughs> they are temporal. So your friends are your responsibility for salvation. Your acquaintances are your responsibilities for salvation. Take that responsibility today in love. In love. In love. For he that winners souls is wise, and the wise shall inherit glory. Can I hear your amen? amen. There's an announcement made today. Life testimonies are more touchy 
than written testimony. Share your testimonies openly. Some have never shared testimony, so they don't have any more. They have never. Everything looks small to them. Everything looks small to them. I was testifying that, can you imagine Jesus? <laughs> he blessed me with a, a thousand naira every week. What an awesome God, my God. This God, who, <laughs> ah, another one, no day. <laughs> <laughs> so, 86, I give testimony of a blessing of 600 naira that came, my God, God. Some have seen 10,000 after not seeing a naira. For six months, they can't testify. How can I say I saw 10,000? People are talking about one billion. <laughs> there is no way I've gone to minister in this world that they don't hear that Jesus delivered me from tuberculosis. Every day. Everybody in this area, in this environment. If you are ashamed of me, I know my word. I'll be ashamed of you. Share your testimony, my friend. Not that online, online, online for what? When you're on ground. Share your testimony. Praise God. A time we call even when they don't call you, go out. They say, well, I, say, I must share this testimony today. Can I hear your amen? You push CCU somewhere. I must share it today. I said, Jesus delivered me from death. You said, you, you didn't call me. I call myself. <laughs> Can I hear you here, man? Yeah. Okay. You never hear me share a message without a testimony. You know what God is doing in my life, what God did in somebody else's life. Be testimony fired. Yes, you know what happens? It multiplies. It's preserved. And it's perfected. Psalm 119 verse 46. I will also speak of that testimony before King and will not be ashamed. How many have what I said? <laughs> Amen. There are many skeptics in the world. When will it be not? Hey, they are reading. Come and share your testimony. It will stick. Thank you, Jesus. For your still worship and my soul to be ashamed, to be acceptable, we must have God unashamedly. Unashamedly. What they say or what they don't say don't bother you. Hmm. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, the power of God to salvation to everyone that believes. Romans 1 16. We must have God sacrificially. The author of sacrifice is the author of supernatural turnaround. Go beyond your best in your love for God to fulfill his purpose. Can I hear your amen? amen. When the Lord turned the captive of Zion, while well, I them that dream, and it happened on the altar of sacrifice, he that goeth forth and weepeth, but bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing the sheep with him. Can I hear your amen? amen. It was on the altar of sacrifice that Abraham secured his generations after him. By myself, I sworn that in blessing I will bless you. <laughs> and in the sea shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And it's happening today. That happened on the altar of sacrifice. May you receive grace to go beyond your best into the realm of sacrifice and serving your God by reason of your love for him. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Among the returns, for serving God, the capital return is divine presence. Say with me, divine presence. Amen. Nothing compares in value with that. If God be for us, who can be against us? When you want to go for Jesus, say, Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Always. The Lord was walking with them, confirming the world with signs following. Mark 16, verse 20. That's the way it works. Divine presence is a capital return from serving God. It's also the platform for the rise of giants. They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Daniel 12, 3. 
they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. It's the platform for the rise of giants. Number three, secures a good old age. I've been saying it before. Now listen to this. Before Jesus returns, if he tarries, we'll be having men and women in their hundreds at their hundred of age in this church. I guess that is why God is putting all those elevators in the ark. Amen. You don't need to step anything. You just move on. And there are lifts for you to walk in and then go up to where you're going to any floor. You know, God always sees ahead of us. He sees ahead of us. In the entire world, there is no facility under heaven that has such level of mechanical means of going up. There's no sort. At no depth, at no bank overdraft, at no we're going to pay you tomorrow. And you know what? They have all arrived. They have all arrived. Not that they are the poor, they are clearing them. They have all arrived. Because some days you'll be 110. This guy with his head, head, head caught or something. <laughs> we soon count 110. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are a thousand toilets there that provide access for you within five minutes to go and come back to your seat. It's looking after you because of what he has in mind. You will testify. You will testify. Some fellows will come on here and say, today I thank God I'm one and ten. I was in that service. How many would do that here? Yes. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. Yes. There is nothing you and I will ever need that is not in being in love with God. Everything is inside it. Everything. Thank you, Jesus. It's a covenant of business breakthrough. I've already done that. <laughs> Daniel 11, 32. Those who do no... He said, those who do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flat tree. But those who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. The anchor of the covenant of breakthrough is being in love with God. That's the anchor, that's the anchor that launches you and me to the realm of things that eyes have not seen nor ears heard. That's the anchor of the covenant of breakthrough. Stay in love with God. Don't let the cares of this world and the discipline of riches Choke your work with God. Yeah, I'm coming. I, I, I'm coming. <laughs> Don't watch your life dry up. Oh. Very few sustain their breakthrough for long. Very few. Strom has such a global breakthrough where he couldn't sustain it. Do you know of all the kings in Israel? Only Solomon had no counselor. Solomon had no counselor. Wow. Stagnant water stinks. Yes, sir. <laughs> wow. Solomon had no counselor. Otherwise, after the first ten wives, who they talk to him? That's true. Nobody That's talked true. to Solomon. Sir. There was no prophet that appeared to Solomon. It was too much. Who is that one? Prophet. I'm the wisest man. God gave me the wisdom. 
that prophet. Who is he? Nobody spoke to Solomon's life till he ghost. For a man to wait and marry 700 wives, he will be possessed <laughs> with all the demons from hell. <laughs> all the demons in hell, all the demons of sexual perversion invaded his life. Nobody could say restore. Nobody has access to him. Sir, you are not all wise. Nobody's all wise, sir. Nobody's all wise. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. David, his father, had two principal counselors. It was counsel that bade him out of being killed by Absalom. Take counsel, my friend, from right people, yes, sir. from right sources. Yes, sir. Counsel that emanate from scriptures. You will endure. <laughs> you will. You will. Thank you, Jesus. How the wisest man became the dumbest dummy. Everything is vanity. Vanity upon vanity. There's no difference between wisdom and foolishness. They all die at the same time. And they are forgotten. Uh, any God you serve is God. So I'm going to serve the shrines of my wife. It all became a dummy overnight. And war came on. He fought battles the day of his death. You won't get there. <laughs> May you be open to the counsel of the Lord Amen. at all times. Where, where your love for God stops is where your breakthrough stops and then your struggle begins. Don't wait for that. We serve a covenant keeping God. He won't bow his covenant to anybody. My covenant will let no break. No other doesn't have gone out of my lips. Those who despise biblical covenant usually end up as more Christ. Forget it, I go. <laughs> they clapped on them for a while, and then soon they are lost in the radar. They can't see them anymore. Lost. Um, you see, um, um, the way the business is expanding. Um, uh, going to church every Sunday is quite going to be uh, an aberration in, 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 to tamper with my schedule. But my wife is there anyway. My wife and my children are there. I'll be following God. When they see my kind of breakthrough, they will also stop. <laughs> Just watch first. I've seen some bit of breakthrough, have we? Is it true? Have I seen breakthrough? Is your heart for God that determines your work with Him? It's not breakthrough. You don't have a heart in the first instance. You had it before you got the breakthrough. You have lost it in the process. You won't lose it. Yeah. God's people will continue to struggle without a revelation of the covenant that secures their change of story. You won't suffer struggles. My people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge. We round up seven covenant terms for supernatural breakthrough. Be born again. We saw Peter willingly gave his boat, led Jesus into his boat, and that became the trigger for his supernatural breakthrough. Luke 5, 1 to 3. Jesus is knocking at your door. Allow me into your boat. And let me change your story. Breakthrough begins with new bath. Breakthrough begins with what? Breakthrough begins with what? Not new birth identity. New birth experience. New birth experience. 
Are you born again? No, I'm a winner. I'm saying, are you born again? <laughs> are you born again? Revelation 3.20, he stands at the door and knock. You open to me, I'll come in. Without Jesus in your boat, the storms of life are waiting. You won't be drowned. Two, be committed to serving God at the end of his kingdom, just as Peter waited on Christ till he was done with preaching. Luke 5, 3 to 4. Be committed to serving God and the end of his kingdom, just as Peter waited on Christ till he was done with preaching. Three, be committed to obeying the instruction of the scriptures with delight, just as Peter obeyed the instruction to let down his net which is dotted in a net breaking and boat sinking order of breakthrough. Enjoy instructions. That is your life. Let what God commands have a hold on your life. Let what God commands have a hold on your life. Cast down your net into the deep for a drought, and then the net began to break, and the two boats began to sink. That will be your experience from now. We took those breakthrough pillars from Peter's experience with Christ in Luke chapter 5 and verse 1 to 5. Now, number four, be diligent because only hard workers become high flyers. Be diligent. Be diligent. There is no place for the I do in the kingdom. Be not slothful in business. My God, be diligent. Be diligent. I have my business. Is that why you are sleeping? Today? 12 known. Say the man that's diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, man. Proverbs 22 and verse 29. Be accountable, my friend. At the beginning of this ministry, we had a global structure, global structure for a minister that has no shape. Global structure. We had executive council my God. <laughs> be diligent. Be faithful because only the faithful can be fruitful. Don't cut corners. Abraham, your father said, I will not take a lecture from you lest you say you make Abraham rich. Don't go the way of the world or you suffer what they suffer. Don't play games. Don't play pranks. A faithful man shall abound with blessings where that make a hate to be rich and not be innocent. Proverbs 28 and verse 20. Unfaithfulness today we show tomorrow in failure. God forbid. Number six, be committed to the covenant of seed time and harvest as a lifestyle. Because no one lacks what he gives, people only lack what they keep. No one lacks what he gives, people only lack what they give. The liberal soul shall be made fat. Either water it shall be watered unto. The secret of Job's rise in business was his given life. He was eyes to the blind. He was feet to the lame. Amen. He plucked out the helpless out of the matter of the ones who want to devour them. It was all out, distributing grace with discretion. Can I hear your amen? And he became the greatest man in all of the East. We are blessed primarily to be a blessing. When stop being a blessing, the blessing stops. Be committed to the covenant of seed time and harvest as a lifestyle. And finally, be committed to a lifestyle of thanksgiving. In everything, do what? Give thanks. And for everything, do what? Give thanks. Ephesians 5.20, for everything, every breakthrough you see, give thanks. In everything, when breakthrough is, tea, is, 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 is on its way coming, give thanks. In everything. So as to preserve the blessings, multiply the blessings, and perfect the blessings. That's the reason why. Thank you, Jesus. By today's anointing, believe God for grace to stay in love. Believe God for grace to stay in active service as a proof of your love. 
believe God to keep the terms of the covenant of breakthroughs. By this anointing, like in Isaiah chapter 45, God will go before you. And will make the crooked path straight. Things will be turning at a rate beyond your imagination. He said in Isaiah 45 verse 1, God said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand of holding, to subdue nations before him. <laughs> and I will lose the loins of kings and open before him the two live gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before him and make the great path straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will also give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. That's what the anointing does. It clears the barriers on your path. Today, every barrier on your path between you and God shall be cleared off. Amen. And you find yourself swarming instead of struggling. Amen. You are scaling new heights. No one among us here shall drop. You won't tell the story of when you used to have breakthroughs in your life. Yeah. It shall be sustained to the end. Yeah. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks, please. Give God thanks. Give him thanks. Give him glory. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name.